The subject of our video interview this month is id Software's biz man, Jay Wilbur. We cornered Jay at id's headquarters in Mesquite and grilled him about the history of id Software, the popularity of Doom, and their forthcoming hush-hush mega super top secret project, Quake. I started working for a small magazines on disc company out of Newport, Rhode Island called Uptime, uh, managing, they are actually programming for the Apple II department. Um, it sort of gelled in Shreveport between John Carmack, John Romero, and Adrian Carmack. Um, and it, it, it happened to gel right next to my bedroom in the house we were living in. Um, so when they got together and, and they went off and they started in software and they needed a business manager, they, 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 you know, they brought me on board. 1991, um, I wasn't a formal member of its software until uh, early 1992. And we did uh, several versions. Uh, there was Commander Keen's Invasion of the Vorticons, Commander Keen, um, Goodbye Galaxy and Commander Keen Aliens Ate My Babysitter. Um, the, the bad guys in our games, the stories in our games, or the, the items of the, uh, uh, the plots of our games, whatever, are secondary to the game itself. Its first project was a program called Commander Keen Invasion of the Vorticons, which was a uh, side-scrolling guy game, just run, right and shoot. I think the, the main reason is because when you go use the shareware channel, you can't hide a bad game in a good box. You lay your cards on the table and you show the people. You say, here it is. If you dig it, give us a call. If, if you think it's bad, thanks for trying. I, I participate in the internet news groups. When you walked in, I was on the um, internet, uh, the Doom IRC channel, talking with the gang there. And so yes, indeed, I, I do, I do watch. I'm, we're good friends with most of the players out there, uh, both the, the players on the player level and players in the uh, industry level. Hey, you know, um, Mario defined guys that run to the right and shoot, and now there's a ton of those. Yet they're still good. You know, you, you get the next version of Sonic come out, and it's still a good game. So if a game comes out in a genre that, that you know, we, we happen to, we kicked off, and it's a good game, then it's a good game. And, and we write the games that we want to play. And first person perspective games are more the games that we want to play. I think it was John Romero actually, he looked back and said, you know, what can we do with this game? Wolfenstein sold uh, approximately in its lifetime both shareware and the retail Spear of Destiny about 200,000, about maybe 300,000 units. Uh, now the shareware side, Wolfenstein's been installed on a lot of machines. I, I don't have the ad adequate numbers, but I'll guess and say some maybe 10 million machines Wolfenstein's been installed on, probably a lot more. We never dreamed it would hit the level of success that it's hit. I mean, we never would have, you know, it's, it's almost a, um, you know, a, an icon, uh, or a cultural icon type thing now. And no, if you told me that a year and a half ago, I was like, <laughs> you know, right, and too much gold tablets. We enjoyed playing it. We enjoyed playing it to excess. Um, you know, we had, you've heard of companies who've had to have conversations with the employees about their, their Doom playing. Well, we've had them in here. Um, we have Doom addicts right here in the office. Oh, I'm testing, yeah, whatever. From a business standpoint, now we have a product in each of the two channels, the shareware, the direct channel, and the retail channel. Uh, Wolfenstein 3D came out, we had Spear of Destiny to follow on in the retail channel. And Doom came out, Doom 2. Doom 2 was more in upgrade in, an upgrade in content as opposed to an upgrade in technology. Um, all new maps, you know, new levels, new music, some new bad guys, a new weapon, um, the same idea, more of the best. John Carmack, who is the head technical guru, designed the Wolfenstein engine. And then 
just took what he had learned up here, the knowledge, and moved forward and designed the Doom engine from scratch. No code went, no code was taken in place. It was just, yeah, it was a complete ground up right. Hover Tank 1, which was the very first 3D polygon game developed for SoftDisk by the members of id Software as they worked, when they worked for SoftDisk. And then there's another one called um, Catacombs 3D, which was an EGA uh, the version of Wolfenstein. But Wolfenstein was a hit. It wasn't a mega hit. We'll, you know, pick a bunch of other words to go for a mega, super, monster, whatever, hit. Oh, this, it, it dwarfs them. Uh, Doom 2, right now we've got about 150,000 units sold direct on Doom. Uh, Doom 2, by last, um, by the end of last quarter, Christmas, uh, first of Jan, first of the year, about 750,000 units sold direct. Now, Castle Wolfenstein um, was originally developed by um, Silas Warner for Muse Software and delivered, uh, I believe, the, the original platform was the Apple II. Well, that's the platform that I know it from. And Wolfenstein 3D is our software. It's uh, the precursor to Doom. Um, it's sort of um, in tribute to Castle Wolfenstein. When we sit down and we say we're going to develop a game, we, we set out with the goal of creating the greatest damn game in the world. Now, whatever elements come into play when we're developing that game, they come and they go. The honest truth is that there's not a lot to tell you. The game is in early development. Um, I, I would refrain from telling you a lot of what I know only because tomorrow what I know could be a complete lie as things change. We fly by the seat of our pants. What Doom was to Wolfenstein, Quake will be that to Doom. It'll be the next quantum leap in gaming technology and um, play mechanics. Uh, we're working on the multiplayer aspects and, um, and, and the 3D um, and the play mechanic accent, uh, aspects. Doom wasn't true 3D, it was fake 3D. It looked like true 3D, but you really, you couldn't look up and down, and you never had a room that was here with another room that was here. It was just not possible. In Quake, you'll have true 3D, where you'll actually be able to have bridges, where one character's here and another character's walking right over his head. If that's possible, you'll be able to six degrees of freedom, um, uh, look up and down, uh, forward, backwards, left and right, um, as well as travel up and down, not only just look up and down. We're enhancing the multiplayer play by turning it into a client server, where, where Doom was peer to peer. Quake will be client server, um, and conceivably, theoretically, not set in stone. But boy, it really would be cool if it happened. The bigger the server, the more clients that can play. So, huge server, huge number of clients. It's um, it's. Moving along, it's a slow process. That's a whole. That's a business that I'm not. I'm not used to. So um, it's it's frustrating because things move slowly, but it's natural for them to move slowly. So there's not a whole lot of that I can tell you other than to say that it is in progress. By by midsummer or by the end of the summer at the latest, you should see uh, um, the first of the Doom novels released by um, Pocket Books. Uh, the cover arts come through, um, and, uh, and and we've uh, applied our um, our notes to them, and they're gonna make some changes, and uh, we're expecting to get all the uh, the text for the books in, the transcripts uh, in in short order for us to read through and review. We focus on one game, and we put every single ounce of our energies into that one title. And when that thing is done, that will be a hit. And so the next game that comes out will be a hit. We've talked to our, our publisher, GT Interactive Software, about the possibility of becoming a um, uh, an affiliate label. Um, and, 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 and turning the re our relationship with GT down that street. And we've got a lot of numbers on the table that need to be chewed, so uh, will we? Maybe. Who knows? Hard to say. 
we licensed the Doom technology to Raven Software, and the guys who did Shadowcaster for Origin Systems. They developed Heretic. We worked as executive producer and control all of its distribution. Um, there's another group right down the hall here, Rogue Software, who's working on a title, working title called Strife, a cyberpunk role-playing game using the Doom technology. Again, we will control its distribution. And we've got things like Pocket knocking on our door to do the books. We're doing the movie deal. Our programs, although they are pirated, I don't think they're pirated as as much as, or at least Doom wasn't, uh, pirated as much as a lot of the other pieces of software from the monolith, you know, the big mega corporations, because people feel that they, they we're tighter with them. My email is always open and I always answer my own email. We've, we're very accessible. We're just a bunch of guys just like the players. That's all we are. We are, we're the players. We're just blessed with the talent to create the games. We don't give one, we don't give the CD user something extra, nor do we penalize the floppy user for not having a CD. Um, the CD, in our eyes, is, is another disc. It's a disc that holds a lot of stuff, and it's pretty, and it's sexy, and if you throw it real hard, you might hurt somebody as it cuts into them, but it's just another disc. It's nice to see the game uh, Doom, uh, you know, the word Doom, used in some other form other than what it was originally in you know as the as the thing that describes this game you know doom like doomish you know a, a, a doom clone or a doom alike yeah, it's it's nice to see that